I'm going to call our August 2nd Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Uh, George, if you'd read us, uh, lead us in the flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this is a, a public meeting, and minutes and video is being taken uh, of the uh, meeting today. Uh, awards and recognitions. Uh, the Board of Commissioners has been supportive of, of our FAIR uh, youth, both FAIR and 4-H and FFA, and uh, usually we try and read the recognition uh, that uh, those youth have sent us. We have just <laughs> under, and I'll hold these up, just under a hundred thank you cards from the Milton Free Water Junior Show kids. And so uh, uh, we'd be here for a while if I tried reading all of those. So I will acknowledge that these uh, came from youth for the livestock sale. I'm sure that uh, parents and 4-H leaders and FFA uh, folks had asked that please recognize the, the uh, county for the support we sent to uh, those youth so they could boost the price they got for animals. Uh, the Junior Show also sent this plaque in recognition uh, to the Board of Commissioners for our support of the youth for that facility or for that show. We do that for the uh, uh, Milton Prewater Junior Show, uh, the uh, uh, Umatilla County Fair, and the uh, Penland Livestock, East Uma is it East Umatilla? Penland Li East Livestock Show. Penland, Penland Livestock Show. Uh, it's hard to keep all of them straight. So again, we appreciate that greatly. And those kids have really appreciated it, as many of you know and understand. That goes toward, for a lot of those students, that goes towards their future fund for schooling. And uh, but it's also a great learning experience, uh, getting some of them into getting a little bit of background in business. Okay, we, we do have a busy agenda this morning, so uh, minutes, uh, the next item, minutes from our previous uh, meeting. I did not get them done yet. Okay, so we'll forgo those. Uh, do we have any additions to the agenda, Doug? Uh, there has been one item that's been added uh, right after the uh, Crusher purchase discussion. There will be some discussion on the fair roads. Okay. Uh, then moving on, public input. Do we have anyone that wants to uh, address the board from the public this morning? Okay, hearing none, we'll move right on to uh, uh, presentations. Do we have any specific presentations that are not already on the uh, Board of Commissioners agenda? Okay, uh, let's jump into our meeting uh, a business item. Uh, we have the uh, Ambulance Service Area 5 Staffing Requirement uh, Waiver. Doug, thanks. Okay, this is coming before the Board from... Uh, the ASA 5 franchise ambulance service franchise holder. Uh, particularly, it's now the uh, East Umatilla County Ambulance Service Area Health District has uh, is requesting the continuance of a waiver that was granted to the East Umatilla County Health District under the previous arrangement that the board approved back in 2013. And what this is done doing is to request the waiver continue through the end of the franchise period for <coughs> the a new district. Okay. Comments, questions? And I believe someone's here from the district if you have any questions. Okay. Uh, if you want to come up and speak to that, identify yourself uh, for the record. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is uh, Jeff Rost. I'm the Acting Administrator for the East Umatilla County Ambulance Area Service District. Uh, and just to speak a little bit to what uh, we're requesting, uh, back in 2013, uh, the Oregon Health Authority uh, required that 
uh, franchises that were using reduced staffing models in order to provide service to their areas, uh, keep track of that information, and then report that information to the health authority. Uh, and basically, reduced staffing means if we have something less than uh, two uh, trained EMT basics or higher in the ambulance. This allows us to use a driver, for example, from another agency if we need to, and then have a paramedic in the back to be able to provide service to whatever patient we're uh, providing care for. So actually what we're requesting, uh, if I can modify the request a little bit, we would like to continue that uh, reduced staffing model as long as we need to within the district. Um, and so if we're, if we're uh, re-awarded the opportunity to continue as a franchise holder after the first <coughs> of this year, we would like to continue with that reduced model. Uh, staffing model, we're of course a volunteer organization, so we rely on uh, professionals within the area to, to provide our ambulance service, and this allows us to, to continue to do that. And we've done that in the past. Yeah, you know, is this being standard. brought about due to the shortage of EMTs? Uh, you're not able to have the, the same number on um, ride? And not necessarily. It's, it's uh, I mean, in part, certainly uh, uh, one problem that we have being just an ambulance service provider, we're also not a fire provider. So with the fire services in East Umatilla County are separate from our medical services. So a lot of the firefighter paramedics that are out there that are trained are interested in working for agencies who are firefighter, fire and EMS services combined. Um, our situation being a volunteer, we, you know, we're, we're relying on registered nurses, we're relying on physician assistants, um, people in the professional uh, environment who are maintaining their skills outside of the EMS environment and then willing to donate their time and come into our community and provide service on the ambulance as well. Uh, so we have uh, trained drivers that are more than willing to get them around. We just uh, need a way to have those professionals work in the back of the ambulance as well. You don't anticipate any negative effect on, on the transporting of patients for the patient's welfare will still be, uh, they'll still receive high quality medical treatment while they're being transported? Absolutely. That's, uh, uh, that's, that's my first and, and foremost concern is to put, make sure that that professional is available to, to provide the care in the back of the ambulance as they need to. Um, this, this just gives us an opportunity to have somebody other than a medical professional who I'd rather have in the back with the patient drive the ambulance. Uh, if we need to have somebody from the fire district come in and provide service for us, we can. Uh, we also have mutual aid agreements with all of our surrounding partners. So if we need to have somebody from uh, Milton Freewater or from Pendleton intercept us in route so that we can have additional staff in the back of the ambulance to take care of the patient, we can do that. And of course, we always rely heavily on LifeLight. Okay. Other questions? Mr. Chairman, I move that it, we approve the request for East Umatilla County Ambulance Service Area Health District to operate with reduced staffing and instruct staff to better to prepare a letter confirming approval. Second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, you very much, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Come on, just on the back. There. Thank you. Okay, the next item, property bids. Uh, hope you're patient. We've got quite a few here, so we're going to have to go through okay. uh, all of them. There are 10 properties that um, are available for sale. I and as usual, um, the county has, through the month of um, July, accepted written bids, and that's what's occurred. There were two that didn't say on the outside which ones they were for, so if you could open those, we can then put them with the other ones that are for that property. That's for that uh, Southwest Birch Pilot Rock. Oh, okay. So Hey, Doug, do you want to announce or is it open? Yeah, okay. This one is for the the first uh, prop, first one up anyway. It's for the um, Echo property. This is Southwest 3rd. Okay, so this is for... Um, oh, the property in Reed. Okay. So the first one that's uh, up for uh, consideration is in the Echo area. It had a minimum bid of 65000 at the auction, and so those are the bids that were submitted for those. 
that piece of property. And the first one is the one you just opened. Okay. And I'm not sure how to pronounce Richard's last name, but Richard Walsic. 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 Uh, bidding seventeen seven seventy seven. Bid from Dale and Jerry Fife. In the amount of fifteen thousand seven hundred. Wow, a lot of bids for that one. A bid by Mitchell Montshellen <coughs> for $10,101. Bid from RJB Investments for fifteen thousand dollars. Even put these there in the order of the yeah. amounts. You like Johnny Carson show? I need to go. <laughs> Your turban on. My turban on. <laughs> This is a bid from Kathy Zentner for eleven thousand. A bid from Lloyd Piercy for forty-one thousand five hundred and ten. Okay, that's for a different piece of property. Okay. Okay. I thought that. Double check. Let's see. I have one, two, three, four, yeah, five bids. Okay, that is. Okay. Okay. This one was on the left. Okay. Sorry, this was okay. Yes, this is the same one. That's for the same property. Yes. Forty-one thousand five hundred and ten dollars. And the minimum is. Uh, the minimum would have been about ninety-eight hundred. Okay. So it looks like the high one is the forty-one thousand five hundred dollars from Lloyd Piercy. Where is this property located? This is in the city of Echo. It is a house. Oh, hi. So we need to act on. Yes, if you want to, you can on that one particular. If you want to go ahead and accept the the bid from Lloyd Piercy for the forty one thousand, you can do so. What was the appraisal on it? Uh, Sixty five thousand four hundred and sixty dollars was the real market value. Okay. Mr. Chair, I move we accept the bid from Lloyd Piercy for the purchase of the uh, legal description. That's uh, the Echo property. It's $41,510. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any other comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, the next property. Okay, the next property is in the city of Hermiston. It is um, a house located on East Ridgeway. And there are a number of bids. This is the one you already opened. It had the ta wrong tax lot number on it, but it does have that one. So I okay. believe that is for that property. Okay. The bid is from Richard Walsick for $17,777. And the minimum bid is? It was 92630 Minimum bid? That was the amount at the auction. Thank you. This is a bid from... RJB Investments, thirty-seven thousand. A 
bid from Austrian Living Trust, Kim Austrian, 14,401. A bid from David and Kathy Zentner in the amount of 15000 Bid from in what's it called? In Punnet? Import? Import? Infinite? Is it Infinite Designs? Okay. For $13,910. And what was the minimum on this one? Uh, $13,895. 13000 so we have a bid for 37000 the high bid from RJB Investments. Mr. Chair, I move we accept the bid. Second. Bid moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. How many do we have? Uh, there are 10 total. We're going to be here a while. This one is in the Hermiston area. It's located at the intersection of Vega Lane and Alpine Drive. It's an unimproved uh, 3.7 acre lot. And it was at the auction for $70,700. So that means you could go down to $10,605. And we have three, three bids. Three bids on that. This bid is from Kim Ostrom and the amount of $11,901. Bid from RJB Investments, $11,000. A bid from David and Kathy Zentner, $17,500. Those are the three? Just three on that one? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so the high bid would be... Uh, 17. 17,500, but David N. and Kathy Zintner. And what was again the? Uh, it's 70,000, 10,605 is the minimum. I move we accept it. Second. Been moved and seconded. We accept the bid of 17,500. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the next one is a house in the city of Milton Freewater. Um, the real market value is 78360 so that means 11754 is the one you can go down to. Okay, we have a bid for 11700 $83 from Infinite Designs. A bid for 15000 from RJB Investments. And a bid for 17. And a bid from John DeLong for 17000 <clears throat> What was minimum on that one again? 11754 Chair, I move approval of the high bid, 17000 from John DeLong. Second. Been moved and seconded. We accept the bid of 17000 from John DeLong. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Next one, you have three bids on its uh, house out in Riverside on Northeast Anzadon. Mm. Paul, you're keeping track of these, aren't you? Okay. 
let us know if we need to pull because Doug we legally don't have to accept we don't have to actually they're pretty good yeah bid from Kathy Zentner ten thousand one dollar RJB Investments, ten thousand. A bid from Kim Ostrin, seven thousand and one dollars. And the minimum was sixty six hundred. So the highest one was from Zinter at ten thousand one dollar. I don't know if you meant to accept it or what was the value on that? Forty four thousand. It's a very small house, I uh, believe, like three bedroom. Um, I would in, say yes. Okay. But we need a motion. Okay. Move to accept the bid from David N. and Kathy A. Zentner, $10,001. Been moved and seconded. We accept the bid of $10,001 from Zentner. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, the next one is a very small parcel here in Pendleton uh, with a real market value of $15,800. It's located uh, down um, off Southeast 17th, I believe. We just had two, two, just two bids for this. That. This is a house? No, it's just a very small, it's a portion of a vacated street. Okay. Minimum, but it's fifteen eighty was the so it's fairly low. A bid of two hundred fifty dollars from Dennis P. Doherty. And that doesn't even meet the minimum. Uh, the minimum that that was the sales price was fifteen eighty. Oh, what was there a minimum? Uh, two hundred and thirty-seven dollars. Okay, so that does meet it barely. I uh, believe these are both adjoining owners that are bidding. Okay. A bid from David and Karen King for two hundred forty dollars. Okay. Mr. Chair, I move we approve the bid by Dennis P. Doherty. Second. Two hundred and fifty dollars. It's been moved and seconded uh, that we accept the bid of two hundred and fifty dollars from uh, Mr. Doherty. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. The next one, there's only one bid on it. It is one of the North Main lots in Pendleton. Mm -hmm. I can read his body language. <laughs> this is a bid uh, from Kathy Zentner, $7,000. Okay. This was um, at the auction for $46,350, so 6952 would be the uh, minimum. Excuse me. So move accepted. Do you think that that wouldn't necessarily have a higher value uh, listing it out? Uh, the the ones on North Main, we had to go through two auctions to get them down to uh, on the last go around, and this is we sold them for less than this okay. the last go around. They're not. And I'll second the motion. They're not really okay, it's been moved and seconded. We accept the seven thousand dollar bid. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. The other lot on North Main, there weren't any bids on it, so that will come back for another auction, is or we'll a, keep it open for other ones. This, we're up to number eight. This one, the next one, is the wreath, outside wreath, and it is 15 acres up on the hillside north of Wreath Road. And there might be two from one person. Let's see. What is it? They up there. Somebody staked on this one. Jeez. <laughs> okay.
Okay, read from the back. Those are the low ones in the back. Okay. Uh, a bid from Fourth Ranch is for $5,000. A bid from David and Kathy Zentner for $4,000. A bid from Lloyd Piercy for $3,610. A bid from John DeLong for $3,500. Chairman, I'd move that we accept a bid of $5,000 from Fourth Ranches. Second. Been moved and seconded to accept the uh, $5,000 bid from Fourth Ranches. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, and the last one is uh, property up in Ukiah. It was the business formerly known as Granny's. What business was that? Was the restaurant. Really good cheeseburgers. We have a bid from Car Carolyn Schock for $12,155. We have a bid from Patrick and Stephanie Picard for $10,000. I guess that's it. And this one, the minimum you could go down to is $9,794. And the high one was 12. Oh, yeah. Chair, move we accept a bid of $12,155 from Carolyn Schock on the property. Second. Been moved and seconded. We accept the uh, bid from Carolyn Schock for 12000 What was it? $12,155. $155. So, um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Is that the end of our... That's the end of those. All right. Uh, okay. It goes back on the tax rolls. All right. Thank you for uh, for that, Paul. Uh, our next item of business is the uh, linear crusher, Tom. And we're going to uh, add uh, our sheriffs. We add an addition on Airport Road. We're going to add this in with Tom uh, after he's done this so you guys can get back on duty. Tom, linear crusher. Thank you. Tom Fellows, Public Works Director. Um, we uh, recently went out for requests for proposals for the rock crusher attachment for a loader. Uh, we <coughs> re received a re proposal from Vanway, which is the company we'd been talking to. We demonstrated that machine. Uh, the machine cost is $369,220. The um, extra tooling that we had requested brought the total of the, plus delivery brought the total of the machine to $409,781. And uh, we're uh, plenty satisfied with that price. They, uh, that's right in right in where they um, we expected it to be. So, and we had to have this in no later than August 15th. Is that if, correct? If if we're yeah, in August 15th, the the price goes up another thirty-seven thousand dollars because that's what the what the price increase from John Deere is for the new engines. Okay. But didn't you also say they only make one at a time? They they, make, they build one at a time. Yeah, they, they, they have the capabilities of, of putting about six of these out of their out of their facility a year. So, um, and but I I talked to Sid the other day and he said said where we are on the list we should have if we uh, if we do this we should have ours in 60 to 90 days. So. I met with Tom after his presentation at the last meeting and while I gulped at the prospect of spending $750,000 he convinced me no no 
<laughs> I, I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying. <laughs> I thought it was 750000 but he was, after his description, I became convinced it was a good purchase. So consequently, finding out it was 409, I'm even more excited. <laughs> you scared me for a minute. No, no, no. I was <laughs> saying what I was saying. Believe me, Tom knows had, that. When we had the conversation, he scared me because I thought that I, maybe I missed something somewhere. <laughs> it brings it into bargain position, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the road department's requesting that uh, commissioners approve the purchase of this machine. I would so move. Second. Been moved and seconded that we uh, move forward with purchasing the li linear uh, crusher. Uh, yeah, and I, I when it was yeah. demonstrated, I did observe that when they uh, uh, had it here last it was spring. Last, yeah, last fall. Last fall. And uh, it was a pretty impressive piece of equipment. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, if Jim and, and Terry and Tom and all come up to the podium, so we can kind of talk about, uh, so everything's on a legal basis on what we're doing. I'm not going to handcuff me or anything. <laughs> One on either Might side. <laughs> as, as he grabs for the tissues. <laughs> nor are they, they going to muzzle you. <laughs> so um, I guess I can start off by uh, we want to talk a little bit about the traffic safety plans uh, going into this right. year's. Uh, if, would you let us know who the safety committee is? Safety uh, committee? Yeah, that you talked to me about. And I uh, want to be careful that we didn't have something like we had down Arnie County. <laughs> oh, so uh, for the last couple months, uh, we've been working with uh, the fair board, um, the EOTech board, uh, our emergency managers, uh, and our staff, uh, particularly uh, Sergeant Roberts from uh, our um, patrol division has kind of been spearheading the not only the traffic safety plans, but uh, our plans overall at the facility during the events. And so if we want to talk a little bit about the traffic safety plans, um, it might be helpful if we can pull up a map of the uh, facility from the EOTech website. Can you do that so we can have it up? It'd be helpful for visuals. You want to move this one up next? Since it's yeah. This badge. yeah. So essentially, uh, we're anticipating uh, some uh, traffic uh, problems we're planning for. We, we really don't know for sure until we're uh, two or three days into the event about what uh, level of traffic we're going to have. And particularly, we're concerned with um, what's going to occur at the end of the events, <clears throat> particularly after the um, rodeo uh, gets out um, and then uh, after that, uh, exiting people after the concerts every night. And I think it's the first one. Is there one that is there a plot map? Yeah, there is one on their website, and that's not it. I think you can try it. Yeah, well, probably under the try the uh, facilities um, tab and uh, the instruction. No. Okay. The development then. No, that's not it. They do. I, I found it. I, I've seen it before, and I just can't remember how to get to it. Maybe it's under facilities. Did you highlight development? Oh, yeah. There we go. Click on it. <laughs> you double click it and bring that image up. Okay. We might just want to be grateful we have something. <laughs> yeah. So essentially, uh, we're primarily concerned with uh, Airport Road and. Uh, Prior to the events, uh, we uh, have plans to put up uh, temporary uh, no parking uh, signs along Airport Road. We don't think that there's enough room to park and have vehicles safely uh, travel uh, down Airport Road because it's so narrow uh, and there's residences on each side. And so that's part of the plan. Also, we're planning on uh, to temporarily reducing the speed limit on Airport Road. 
uh, to somewhere I believe we decided on 25 uh, in the area of the uh, entrance and exit uh, off of Airport Road to the EOTech um, property. And uh, currently now there's, it's not marked for speed anywhere on that road. And so uh, under state law it would be considered a 55 mile an hour zone, which we, we believe in, is way too fast for that area. So temporarily we'll uh, restrict the speed. Uh, all, all this is uh, designed to uh, um, you know, eliminate crashes or uh, pedestrian uh, vehicle incidences. And so we want to do everything we can to try to mitigate those problems. Uh, so um, just, during... Just a question, 55 mile an hour zone, but where does basic rule come into that? Um, the basic rule can apply um, based on conditions, uh, weather, daylight, all of those things. So uh, congestion. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, so the speed limit wouldn't be 55, then it fall under basic rule. It would be under under ORS, but uh, or, uh, basic rule could apply as well. Um, so, um, for the uh, events themselves, again, we don't know uh, what kind of a traffic problem we may or may not have. Uh, particularly at the uh, end of the <coughs> events. Uh, so uh, our plans now and working with the fair board, uh, they have an entry exit point um, at the main entrance. And while we're talking about the main entrance, uh, we have been receiving complaints at the main entrance. Uh, vehicles exiting from the EOTech property, uh, pulling out onto airport, uh, too far out into the road and traffic that's coming uh, west on airport. Uh, there's been some near misses for collisions there. Uh, we think it's primarily because the visibility as you exit EOTech uh, looking to the left or to the east is blocked by a bunch of trees and debris there on the corner of that property. So we think if we cut those back, uh, it would it allow better visibility for people exiting from that main entrance. Have you talked to Tom? Yeah, it would be on the property owner next to it because we've got everything trimmed back to the right of way line. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what the solution is, maybe working with the property owner to see if they would be willing to cut some of that back, but that is a problem. If you exit from there next time um, to the left, it, you have to pull out almost onto the road before you can see down the airport to see if any traffic is coming. Wasn't the owner of that property at an EOTech meeting? Yes. Uh, they talked about doing that trimming or having it done. And you might remind him that if it isn't and there is a crash and it's because liable. of security, that his li he's liable. So he may... Now they they did come to an EOTech two different uh, feelings from that property owner that they didn't want to do anything with the trees because of hawks in the uh, nesting or roosting in those trees. So w we've had different conversations with them regarding that. So it might help if our sheriff's department approached them regarding the legal issues and then. Uh, Doug, I've talked to Doug and he's got some ideas as far as the legalities on how we can move forward in keeping our road department in the loop on all this and help with planning too. Okay, I thought sure. when we met, had our joint meeting he was amenable to doing something. He said he would. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've had two different stories from Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, getting back to the plan itself, so uh, during the events, that will be uh, the main entrance and exit up until about uh, 9 p.m. After 9 p.m., there will be an exit-only point at the southwest corner of the property onto airport, and there will be no exit from the main entrance. And so that's designed to get people out of the facility as uh, quickly as possible. Again, we don't know if uh, people will, will all try to exit at once or if they'll kind of trickle out over the uh, course of the events. As we know, sometimes after the rodeo, uh, some folks stick around. They don't leave immediately. They have other things they're doing there. Um, and so we think that they may filter out gradually. Uh, after the concert is probably when most people will be leaving because that's nearing the end of the, of the fair for the night. Jim, did you say there are two exits onto Airport Road? There will be one exit only at the southwest corner after 9 p.m. So and that's at the southwest corner there. They've cut a new fence and gate. Um, so on they that. won't come out the main entrance? No. No, that will be closed for exiting. The, so the reason they did that, because of the parking, they're moving on down toward Airport Road with, with all the taped off uh, yeah. flagging. 
and to have people uh, go in off of the main entrance and park uh, using that for parking and then when they leave going clear yeah. to that far west side and going down along that fence yes. and going out. It does make sense to do. We think it'll alleviate some of the confusion yes. about where to exit Just, if we have one yeah. only. So. And I visited with Tom. Tom is aware of that exit and even I don't think we're doing anything with the gravel at that exit. I think uh, they're, they're, taking care of they're taking care of it. So, uh, but they do, uh, and they're working on a, a permit for that. So, it's not any different than the old fairgrounds, is it? The old fairgrounds uh, had had an entrance and an exit. Yes, yeah. it did. It had uh, entrance and exits at, exits at uh, a couple different points. But you didn't. But you went down. Had to go somewhere else to exit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Before it was the uh, entrance off of Orchard. And then uh, exit off of 7th next to the school. Right. They actually came out uh, through the Bruin building parking lot as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I think the school closed off that other exit to 7th. Well, it just isn't, it's not unusual to have a separate exit. Yeah, no. So uh, if we run into a problem with traffic backing up, uh, we'll filter them out of that southwest uh, exit point. And uh, we'll have everybody go to uh, exit to the right for them. It'll be a right turn heading west uh, onto 395. From there, we'll have people uh, filter either right or left, basically, uh, depending on if they want to go north or south on 395. We think just letting the traffic flow as much as possible without having a bunch of stops is the most expedient way to get people out in the shortest amount of time. Uh, and not having the roads blocked for any longer than we we need to. But again, it, it all goes back to we don't know how much of a traffic problem that will be. We'll just monitor it uh, Tuesday, Wednesday night. Uh, of course, we anticipate the most cars Friday, Saturday. So um, our personnel on staff uh, will uh, on the site will will be able to monitor that and make adjustments. Okay. Have you coordinated with ODOT on Airport 395 and OT? We've had some uh, conversations with them, and they have essentially said that they don't want to be involved, and they won't be involved in the in any of the uh, plans. So uh, we've kind of proceeded on our own. But the traffic coming out of the parking lot will it be directed only west? Yes. Toward toward 395. Yes. Will that be with the use of cones? How are you, or something? Uh, we'll we'll probably have uh, some sort of barrier. We'll have officers out there. Um, directing traffic and directing people which way to go. If, if there's a barrier out there, what what does that do to eastbound or westbound traffic coming from Ott Road or one of the neighbors? Uh, if there's westbound traffic, they'll have to stop until all the cars are cleared. We don't think it makes sense to stop uh, 100 cars uh, to let one go by, um, so they'll just have to wait. And uh, that... that uh, I think that's probably the most expedient way to get people out. Will there be personnel there? Pardon? Will there be sheriff's office personnel yes. at that spot? Uh, there will be sheriff's office personnel and personnel from other law enforcement agencies. As, as you know, in the past, we've always had uh, great cooperation from all of our other law enforcement partners. So we anticipate that we'll have uh, anywhere from 15 to 25 law enforcement officers from various agencies as well as ours throughout the whole week. So we'll have plenty of uh, personnel to help with that. Terry, well, you talked about being short-staffed here some time ago, having some folks gone. How is this? Are you going to get enough help from others so you have some backup? You no, know, currently we um, we're down. Uh, well, as of today, we're only down two positions. Okay. Uh, due to retirement and resignation, as one deputy moving to Wisconsin and the other deputy retiring. Um, and so, you know, again, with the cooperation and collaboration with other agencies, getting more personnel there is going to, to be instrumental in, in providing that, that level of safety there that we have historically had. So um, I think we look forward to it every year, but it's always this unknown. And, you know, right now, it's much like we've, we've said, um, this is a new event, new location. Um, we don't know if there's going to be a problem or not. 
We don't know if we'll experience 100 cars trying to get out of there at once or if it'll if they'll just trickle out in and out throughout the evening. And uh, one certainty is typically, you know, once the concert is over is when we'll have and, and or the rodeo is over. That's when we uh, see the a higher level of people leaving the facilities. And so um, we do know that for certain from experience at the old facilities, but uh, right. we still don't know for sure what that's going to look like. Okay. Any other questions for us? The rodeo arena, the participants, I, I would expect the traffic to be a lot less, but they have an exit over to Ott Road that will still be there? Yes, yes, that's still there. And and so in talking with the rodeo uh, board, um, of course, we're expecting to have some uh, citizen complaints from uh, people in the area because, uh, as you know, in, in the rodeo, they're going to have uh, large truck semis uh, hauling cattle um, down um, – Ott Road, which is a dirt road, and uh, that's going to kick up a lot of dirt and dust. And uh, we're uh, the uh, rodeo directors are uh, developing a plan to guide people into the facility, particularly uh, contestants and uh, stock contractors. Um, they probably will, will play signage on 395, um, probably at uh, Ott to try to direct those large vehicles down directly to the facility versus having them come down airport and trying to make a left turn in that very tight intersection at uh, airport and Ott. And so that's that's part of their plans as well and they're developing signage. I don't know what that's going to look like yet, but uh, there will be a lot of uh, large vehicles coming down um, Ott Road. Okay. I believe that the, the EOTech board has taken some measures to to alleviate it to some extent with they they had dust suppression and so on they're doing the dust suppression on Ott road uh, they've talked about the rodeo board has talked about uh, and i haven't attended their meetings uh, formally but they've talked about having people exit and go is it north north on Ott road over to, to, to east highland sure. i'm not sure what kind of them issue that could create but uh, again dealing with dust because that dust suppression does not go the full length of or won't go the full length of EOTech yeah. grounds and the other question I had was uh, so that we if we have a, a if you guys have to do citations or to tow a vehicle because of being parked illegally uh, Doug, can you explain what we need to do as far as policy and ordinance so that we're not liable if somebody says, you damaged our vehicle, you didn't have authority, this sort of thing? Well, the Board of Commissioners under its uh, authority for uh, county over county road jurisdiction uh, could implement uh, the temporary uh, reduction in the speed and as well as issuance of the no parking area for uh, purposes. And then you might also want to delegate your authority to the sheriff and the road department to implement uh, your uh, designations. Would that incorporate the diversion, traffic diversion as well? Yes. Okay. How about the road department and liability? And they're getting, they get questions. Uh, it's, that it's, it's then under the, Board of Commissioners authority. Okay. Is that what a motion should read? Yes. Yep. Get that, Melinda? Yeah. <laughs> I would so move. I oh. already did. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, any, I'm with you. Second. Any comments or <laughs> questions, Tom, Terry, Jim? I, I, I guess I do have one. Um, you know, of course, this is uh, first year and uh, a lot of things could happen. But I'm just wondering if the EOTech uh, has uh, future plans of actually paving uh, Ott Road from 395 well, to paving and widening. I'm going to let Tom address that. Be uh, well, yeah. yeah. As soon as the governor signs the transportation package, there is money in there for the paving of uh, Airport Road and for at least a portion of Ott Road. Uh, 
I don't know exactly how that's worded, so I, I can't tell you right here. I The other thing is, is I don't know when that is uh, programmed for. In other words, I don't know what the what year that is. In, in It's a seven-year package. I, my understanding is it's pretty pretty near the front of the projects of the earmarks, but I don't know exactly where that's going to stand. So, so yeah, there is money in that. One of the questions I've got is what is EOTech's responsibility for doing some of these things? Because there's a cost associated with every bit of this, and, and I, I was always under the impression as part of the planning process and the permitting process that they were supposed to pony up for the majority of, of these types of special events. So what's What's with that? Uh, the agreement was they would do that. However, there seems to be an issue about, oh, wait a minute, this is a county road. <laughs> so, uh, so we're still working on their responsibility at doing some of these, because it's not just fair and rodeo. It will be other events in the coming uh, year and years, and there will be numerous, or we hope, there's going to be numerous events, so uh, there's going to have to be a cost there that they bear also. I, I go back, though, to what I can't remember who was the undersheriff or the sheriff said, that we may, we may in fact find ourselves being overprepared, but I'd far rather see us overprepared than underprepared. And this is an experiment, or a pilot, so to speak. I mean, we'll, get, we'll be better able to make these decisions on what we need to do and what EOTech needs to do after we've actually done it. And my understanding, Tom, is that we're already gathering data as far as the traffic frequency and speeds. Yeah, that was the other um, thing. I'm going to work on, on that. I'm not sure how we're kind of like the sheriff's department. We don't know what to expect, so we're, yeah. we're not really sure how, the, how, how well our data collection is going to go, but we're, we're going to make some attempts at it. Tom had talked to me about putting... Uh, on airport and, and on both, but I, uh, we have some questions about whether or not we're going to be checking the right locations, you know, uh, we're going to we're going to wind up with a lot of data with just how useful well, it is. Yeah, well, it'll be usable. Uh, what now? The road department has none of no no parking signs. We have never have never have had a need for them. So, uh, any thought to where that's going to come from? Yeah, we've made arrangements with the city of Pendleton uh, to borrow some from them. We'll, we'll be picking them up on Friday. Um, Jeff Brown from the city has been really great to work with and uh, has offered up whatever they have uh, that we could use. Yeah. I would well, that won't be an expense to us. The other question, I know that uh, months ago, sitting down, uh, going over the plans, it would appear that there, there may be a future plan of actually extending a road on the north side of the facilities out back out to 395 particularly for emergency vehicle response. Um, and I don't know if you've heard anything about that. For doing what again, Terry? Extending a road that will be north of the facility, sort of in between the airport and, and the facilities that extends out to 395. Or out to Ott Road and then to 395? I'm not sure if it goes back uh, to Ott Road. But I haven't be. heard of that. Okay. And I... Don't, uh, there's a piece of ground that I think whoever owns that to the, uh, the northwest. To the northwest. What's the airport uh, angles? It, it, well, it, I think it abuts the airport property, this piece of ground. I think they're talking about trying to sell that, uh, but I don't, I don't know. May yeah, I go back to something Tom said about uh, we thought EOTech was going to take responsibility, and this is not a conversation we've had for the first time. We thought EOTech was going to do this, but in the end, this is the Umatilla County Fair, and I think at least the first go-round is, is on us uh, as Umatilla County, because I don't think there's anybody in Umatilla County that thinks this is the EOTech Fair. So we're, we've sucked it up on a regular basis. <laughs> this, this 
is not the only event, and and if the county is going to be responsible for every event, then that's no. a different conversation yeah. than the county fair. I'm I'm. That's why I made the comment. This is the Umatilla County Fair, and I think we have to keep remembering that in these conversations. The next big event probably isn't going to be a Umatilla County event. Uh, what I would ask, knowing this is going to go forward, and we'll be doing, or, or somebody will be, and it'll probably be us, the county and you guys, uh, work for the future anyway, uh, I know, Tom, you're swamped, and you guys are swamped too, but kind of sit down together and be thinking about some future issues on how uh, we can address some of these things, because we're going to have to. We don't know when we'll get the money for the, for the roads, uh, how that's going to be impacted. Uh, we don't know when the governor will sign the money bill, when or if parts of that it's set up so parts and pieces can be pulled uh, and put on a referendum for the public having to do with taxes. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns. So, uh, and, and so we don't have our departments, whether it's sheriff or roads or, or whoever, or, or the county, the board, uh, keep our liability down. So going back to that, uh, again, if you guys can work together and keep me in the loop as liaison to Certainly Bill agree. in the loop as liaison to chair. We'll, we'll do everything we can to step up and, and uh, take responsibility for uh, anything that we need to. Uh, we're certainly concerned we want to maintain safety and security right. and, and we'll do whatever we need to to do that. Uh, the plans, although they're in place, uh, they're not set in stone. And so every day uh, our personnel will be briefing and they'll make adjustments to plans as needed. And then certainly after the uh, events are over, uh, you know, in the coming weeks, we'll, we'll probably have after action briefings and, and talk about what we did well and what we could improve on. And so that's all part of the uh, evolution of uh, plans at the new yeah. facility. It will be a change in progress and a, a uh, event in progress all the, all the time. And Tom, uh, you're not immune <laughs> to this deal, so. <laughs> no, so. I think it would be incumbent on you, Larry, though, to convey to the EOTech board that our response is based on the fact this is the county fair. Yes. And not to anticipate and this will be extended to them. And the, the other members of the uh, EOTech board that are also board members for the fair have been down there almost 24 7. I've got to give all those guys kudos. They have worked and worked and worked to do that. Well, you need so, to know my vote is contingent on the fact you're going to paint the safety building crimson and gray to match the barns. <laughs> <laughs> so that needs to happen soon. <laughs> so, Mr. Chair, would it be appropriate to? Uh, move to accept the reports from our public works department and, and sheriff's department and approve of what we've heard well, we have a motion on the floor we did uh-huh yeah where was i <laughs> you seconded it the motion. <laughs> <laughs> no he seconded it seconded the motion uh it, it was oh, that, we, the, that was just a delegation of authority then you might yeah. approve okay. the plan and then you'll put together a can you put together a an order for that, or do we need? I a, don't think we need a written. We don't at this need point. an order. So, uh, is, is that going to work out for you guys? Yeah. I just want to be sure that when you tow somebody's car, <laughs> we've got some backup, <laughs> or whatever happens. What does Melinda have? And divert traffic. Was that all what we had? Okay, we, we have a motion and second. Any comments or questions? Does that need to be specific to the county fair? Or is it that does. Wide open to 
No, no. This is for this event. This is for this is, event. Uh, is that in there? Well, the maker of the motion has been insisting it's at County Fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just got through with a week of doing friendly amendments at NACO. <laughs> Man. While she's looking, Sheriff, you might notice that you're Mr. August on the county calendar, so yeah. <laughs> up there. <laughs> I didn't even know we had a calendar, county calendar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we got it for the event of the county fair. For the event of the county fair. Okay. Other comments, questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. One, uh, now that we've done this, one issue I've got some concerns about is why I hope we're okay with ODOT. Because they, they're kind of out there on their own and they don't. Uh, well, they were trying, uh, they tried bringing them into the fold back months ago, <laughs> early planning phases. And they just weren't interested in. And it wasn't just our office, it was just in media as well, uh, you know, asking if they would help participate. Uh, and, you know, some of this traffic diversion, and they just, really no explanation as to why either. So. And as long as we're talking about this, I would expect I would anticipate that the data that we are able to gather, be both visual and and by counters, that uh, I expect we're probably going to need it in the near future to address a speed reduction on airport road period I would permanently. Think so. Yes. And so we need to be aware of and and uh, uh, of the negotiation that needs to occur with ODOT, mm -hmm. since they have control of that. We can certainly reach out to them again and maybe go higher up the chain to see if we can get some more different response. I would. It, this came up a little bit at an EAC meeting, the fact that 395 is a major freight route and they have concerns about impeding or slowing down the, the transportation of freight, movement of freight. Uh, and it was talked about doing some improvements and that was only in a comment passing at a NEAC meeting. Uh, and then I met separately with, uh, well, when Monty was still there and now with Craig Sipp uh, about uh, any improvements at the intersection of 395 and, and Ott and 395 and Airport. That didn't go very far. So I... Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be quite a hurdle. Maybe they'd like afraid. a roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> right outside of the the Walmart distribution center. I'll bet they'd love that. Yes. Yeah. So I know that there was been significant conversation around it. I just don't know where they're out with that. There is talk of putting traffic control devices out there at some point. With, uh, but isn't that surrounding ranch and home? Ranch and home. Yeah. The, the trucking association is going to be weighing in very heavily on that, I'm sure. So, all right, guys, anything else? No, thank you. Thank you. Do you want to address the Sunridge? Oh, Sunridge, while, while you're here, uh, I want us to skip down to item number eight, uh, Sunridge Systems Payable, uh, and that is our standard uh, contract. Uh, annual renewal. It's an annual renewal for the software maintenance and right. license. Our annual renewal for maintenance. The only thing, is, you know, I think somewhere in there it says for dispatch software maintenance. And that is much broader because it's not just the dispatch software, it's what the, all the police agencies use as well. So it's that total package. Uh, all the uh, user agencies that are. And, and the system pays into a reserve account 
where uh, these funds are taken from and, and uh, uh, support this. And this is the software for the 911 program in general. And the police reporting and stuff it, like that. Right. And we had a bunch of hiccups in that a number of years ago. Did that kind of get when we made the changeover? Um, I, you know, sometimes you want to be political on certain things, but I would say that their customer service isn't at a level where I would like to see it at, but at the same time, it's they, they do uh, come out with uh, frequent updates to the system to try to benefit uh, all the users. Okay. Uh, and so uh, we'll see where it, it actually is. Uh, we haven't had some of the major catastrophes that we once did. We, we did some drilling and, and really taxied the system uh, and learn why we were having some freeze-ups and things like that that was um, uh, the root cause was with the program itself and so they were able to make some adjustments there and get us uh, up to a level where we're not freezing up and locking up stations when we're in the middle of a major emergency. So. Terry, on a on a scale of 0 to 10, what's your satisfaction level with them? 10 being wonderful, 0 being not? I would say probably in the middle. You know, it's got some really great aspects to it, the police uh, reporting. And uh, that was one of the, the uh, selling factors for us to begin with, was that with the old program on the police report writing side, it was so glorious that, that our deputies and the police officers were more like data entry clerks than just simply get in there and get the report done and get it submitted. Um, but the old system had, you know, higher quality of uh, dispatching capabilities. And so now it seems to have flip-flopped. The report writing is, is great with this system. Officers are, are able to get in there and get their stuff done. The dispatch <coughs> is still kind of waiting where we've got agencies, uh, particularly the West uh, Umatilla County Fire District, wanting to do unit recommendations. So uh, where, you know, if they, depending on call type of fire, ambulance, wherever the uh, case may be, they want to go in there and make unit recommendations. So those, uh, the recommended resources are automatically uh, dispatched. And so, I think where we're at right now is trying to develop that. And so, with three stations over there, actually four uh, stations over there, including Stanfield, it's kind of difficult because uh, you have to go in and set all this mapping up and say and designate different areas. And then within each of those areas, you have to designate what units are uh, to be dispatched, et cetera. So, it's going to be a work in progress progress and it has been a work in progress for about the last year. But you know the customers are, are asking for this and we're trying to get there. But at the same time, what I'm telling our uh, dispatch administration is and these different agencies is we want to be consistent across the board. And so I don't want a dispatcher in the heat of, a, of an emergency to have to pull out a book to determine what units to dispatch, et cetera. And so if we can streamline that process so we know that we're getting the right units out there uh, or resources to respond, uh, that's where the, the goal is, is to get to that. Well, I just know that from time to time, their customer support has been uh, lacking, non-supportive. <laughs> and uh, I just want you to know, as you're negotiating those, if you need some additional weight from the Board of Commissioners to be sure, be sure and seek it. Sure will. Terry, thank you. Thank you. Do we have a motion? No. No. <laughs> I, would, I would move approval of the payable in the amount of $55,397 dollars to Sunridge Systems Incorporated. Second. Been moved and seconded that we pay do uh, the payable for the amount of fifty five thousand three hundred and ninety seven 
397. 397 to Sunridge. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Oregon business plan, site certificate transfer. Tamara, do you have both of those? Tamara Mabbitt, County Planning Director. So the first item is um, uh, a project from COLO. Can't remember exactly what COLO stands for. It's a Columbia River Logistics. Um, it's a business that's located at the Port of Umatilla. And um, they had filed with the state of Oregon, Business Oregon, for a tax incentive program called um, Oregon Investment Advantage, and that's administered by Artfish from Business Oregon. The way that process works, it's a little unusual. Um, they send a notice and provide an opportunity for a local government to object if they want to object, and um, objection would be based on some conflict with other businesses. So this is my first time working through this. So I've um, consulted several times with my liaison commissioner. Um, it's located in the port and actually the property is in the urban growth area. So I confirmed with the city it's been permitted, etc. The business is expanding um, to add another line of dairy feed. So it's mixing products, etc. The nice thing about this tax incentive is it is a um, an income tax benefit. So it really um, doesn't compete with any local revenue sources for the county. Um, the we, I have gone ahead and said that the county does not object, but Art Fish asked for some formal ratification to that effect. Uh, Tom, uh, Paul, this may be a question for you, and this is just history. Uh, and you said, Tamara, you were a little new to this Columbia Colo. It, am I remembering right? Colo was negotiating with the port a number of years ago on two buildings for this very, and they yeah. they did not do one of the buildings for some reason. They did both buildings. This was a, a byproduct of private zone stuff at one time, and uh, Commissioner Puzzi or uh, Mr. Port Authority. Lucy was very much in favor of giving them the extended abatement, which we did on one of the two buildings. And, um, and then we found out through some dialogue that they were using some um, uh, prison labor uh, internally for some of their workforce that wasn't part of their full staffing considerations. And that created a little bit of uh, heartache, I think, from pe some people's perspective. But this, I don't believe, has anything to do with prison labor per se. These are FTEs that they're adding in the midst of this. Uh, mm -hmm. So they, it was SJR, it's SJR Colo. They have two facilities and they have a, a mixed plant up on top. Right. They receive enterprise zone benefit. All of the enterprise zone benefit for uh, SJR Colo is done now. Okay. So all of it is on the tax base. And as Tamara alluded to, this is just a income tax purpose for additional employees. Okay. Thank you. So now you know more than we know on that. And um, this uh, Oregon Investment Advantage is not available uh, universally throughout Oregon. Umatilla County happens to be on the list, so based on um, income level and unemployment. Um, and even if we move out of that that list to qualify for OIA or a business to qualify, that business would continue the benefit. Okay. Questions? No. Okay. Mr. Chair, I would move that we uh, give our support to the COLO project, uh, to the Oregon Investment Advantage, for the Oregon Investment Advantage. Incentive and, and sent a, send a correspondence to Arthur Fish, the business incentives, Business Oregon. It's a little long. Second. Been moved and seconded that, that we uh, give the support for that. Um, any further questions? One additional comment there have been no reported uh, complaints about odor. <laughs> yeah. 
which is plaguing Stanfield on a similar issue at this point, but and a whole well different process. But you, you, your motion in the second was that we send a letter of, of uh, support. Yes. Uh, you want that to come from the chair or the whole board? Right now, it's from the chair. I think the chair is probably adequate. Okay. All right. Uh, you you have another site certificate. Wheatland. If, if it's coming, if it's coming, if we vote, it comes from the board, does it not? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Just we can all sign it. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't have, we don't have to sign it, but it comes on behalf of the board. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did we vote say on that? that? No. no. Okay. So it will be be sent in support of, of that. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Uh, Wheatland. Wheat Ridge. Wheat Ridge Wheat is Ridge. the Wheat next Ridge. one. I'm thinking right. Wheatland Bakery. Mm. And um, <laughs> Wheatland, <laughs> maybe you're hungry. So this is a, um, a, was a notice received from the Energy Facility Siting Council, the Wheat Ridge um, Energy Generation Project located in both Umatilla and Morrow County, the vast majority of Morrow County. The scope of the notice was limited to the transfer of ownership. So it previously um, was uh, Jerry Reitman and um, an LLC, and it has been sold and transferred to Next Era Energy Resources LLC. And in this capacity, the board serves at both as the Board of Commissioners and the Special Advisory Group. So the letter that was um, submitted by the deadline, which was last week, um, just says that the county does not have an objection to that. And the majority of this project is in Morrow County. Correct. And uh, so our exposure to it's pretty limited. Morrow County, I understood, had public hearings on this, on the transfer. I but don't know. I know I see the comment here. The board may wish to provide an opportunity for public comment. I'm not, I think we've had that already. Um, I not only think we've had it already, but Next Era and Allo Resources have been extremely forthright in meeting with us on several occasions regarding this. Yeah. Plus, we've gone through all the other stuff related to its location. So uh, I would move whatever we need to move. I, I cannot remember, but early on the Wheat Ridge project, we had quite a flap about the connective. Uh, connection line. Have they clarified it? No, sir, they have not. And remember, that is the issue that FSEC, that we disagreed with FSEC on. Right. Um, and that is not the scope of this. And we have not held the public hearing about this specific item. Certainly, we've had hearings about, about the project. About yeah, the project. That's what I intended. Yeah, the, the transfer of the certificate has nothing to do yeah. with that. But I was just curious are we still in the dark where they're going to put their transmission line uh formally yes informally i know they're working on some on an option in morrow county okay. um, but they haven't taken off the table a transmission line in umatilla county and okay. that would be come to the planning commission for an application all right uh is there a mo did you make i make a motion second been moved and second that we uh, approved this uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank aye. You. Motion carries. Uh, thank you. Uh, Tammy, the, uh, the other Tammy. Oh. Okay, Dale's traveling a couple of days. He's wearing his juvie hat today, so he sent me here to... Um, what um, community corrections is in a need to deliver um, to hire a couple PO techs to deliver our COGS intervention services to the clients on supervision. So lip sync um, through the justice reinvestment um, is recommend has a recommendation that we hire two PO techs. One tech would be paid out of the regular community correction budget, and one tech would be paid out of the justice reinvestment. Justice reinvestment money isn't going to be in for uh, two or three months, but we have enough money in our contingency in 1527. So if we needed to transfer money in the interim, we would like to go ahead and post for these positions and get these positions hired as soon as possible. And this is all through uh, the justice investment fund. Right. So 
But this this is all part of the long-term discussion, is it not, from mm -hmm. some sort of post-drug court and reorganization and So this is all the, the changes from no that. drug court, no and D. Um, so this is kind of the way that they're re um, distributing the services that we would um, give and like I said, Lip Sync is requesting and or recommends that we actually hire community corrections employees to just um, to deliver the actual COG services, and then of course the rest, um, the A and D services are, um, are referred out. Right, I've been involved because it crosses boundaries between A and D and and this and. Mm -hmm. have been and and Susan McHenry has been involved very deeply involved as chair of Lipsick and I've been involved so I'm I would move we approve this I would second been moved and second that we go with the or approve the recommendation yeah, to make it clear that it's, there's no impact on the general fund here right no no but but they've been excellent about the communication absolutely with that, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And the last item is the downtown payable. Um, the downtown um, association payable. Um, well, <coughs> we uh, pledged last year, we pledged $20,000 to the, uh, the downtown project from the community development fund. We paid 10000 last year. Uh, even though uh, we mentioned the 20, I was advised by our CFO that we had not taken formal action uh, relative to the second 10,000. So uh, we need to get that. We need. We probably wouldn't have sent it this early, except that the, the fence ostensibly is going to go up by Roundup, but we're waiting for the Union Pacific Railroad. So I would move that we approve this payable. Is there a second? Second. And move and second that we uh, uh, do the payable for the Penland Downtown Association. Uh, and the amount is $10,000. $10,000. This is the second installment. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Uh, do we have an executive session scheduled that we need to... So we will not be doing the executive session. Uh, we will have commissioner's reports. But before we do that, did you have anything? We have one member of the public here. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, commissioner's reports. Uh, Bill? Well, it's, uh, it's been interesting getting back into the saddle after the month of July, which I think... I had a total of about seven days in the whole month here, which uh, it's a, and it's a bit again like uh, <clears throat> drinking from a fire hose, as things have happened and things go on, but uh, nothing beyond the excitement of a lot of there are, are economic development projects that are coming forth that are requiring quite a bit of time and. Uh, but they are moving, and I think we, uh, we're we in for an exciting four or five years. Okay, George. Um, most of what I've been involved in isn't particularly public <laughs> of late, <laughs> legal matters on behalf of the county, but I, I certainly did enjoy the, the commitment that 14 of the 15 members of the board uh, of Eastern Oregon University were all in Pendleton last night making it clear they they value their partnership with with Umatilla County and want to expand it and pointed out that there's 300 students from EOU here they want to increase that number uh, and they really want to have partnerships um, I think you were there for the, the speech part no, from Tom Insko, who's the president and very, very much business oriented, uh, indicated they want to have continued conversations uh, with, with the community in general relative to how EOU can provide meaning to their students in terms mm -hmm. of what they will do post-graduation. He said there's a kind of a lapse now that 
they they obviously go to college and major in something, but there isn't much conversation or connection between the, the university experience and and where they might be engaged in Eastern Oregon uh, as far as post graduation. Is that a fair yes. representation? Yes, that's very had a discussion, very clear. discussion with him directly uh, about the the cooperation and the in the collaboration between they and Blue Mountain and how how, how they really value Blue Mountain. And, uh, I, I made a comment that Cam Price had told me that the first class of data uh, technicians, uh, the, the data science class that they provide, data technician science class, they provide through the Boardman Center that they've graduated their first class and every single one of them had a had an immediate offer. So, and he says, yeah, he says that, and we want to support that. He said, we would like to see that type of thing continue through Blue Mountain. The, uh, yeah, because major, precision major, ag. Well, major employers that we have talked to who are interested in our county have indicated that it isn't just technical degrees they're looking at. Uh, as this grows out, they're going to need bachelor level graduates as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, just an update, uh, and I'll do that. I'll, I'll start with, uh, I'll be leaving here this afternoon to attend the Walla Walla Valley Metropolitan Planning Association meeting in Walla Walla. Uh, of course, we're involved in that. Uh, we will be having, uh, in August the 17th and 18th, just prior to the uh, CLIPS event, we'll be having the uh, Oregon Transportation Commission and NEAC joint meeting in Enterprise on August 17th and 18th. And of course, I'm involved with that, so I'll have to be over there. Um, then, uh, so that uh, you know, as, as uh, Commissioner Alfrain and I attended the NACO conference, the committee that I sit on, the Energy, Environment, and Land Use, and as a NACO board member, uh, there were three resolutions passed that directly affect Umatilla County, and I carried two of those. So NACO will be lobbying, and, and in no specific order, they'll be lobbying for uh, the support of infrastructure built out for the liquid natural gas pipeline going from Colorado across the country to Coos Bay, Oregon. And that will enable the port of Coos Bay to export uh, liquid natural gas. That, that will be huge. Of course, that's a lobby effort. That isn't, we're going to do this. It gives NACO, the uh, National Association of Counties, the ability to lobby that on Capitol Hill. Now, we passed that in the EELU uh, steering committee and that came to the NACO board and we we passed those resolutions. Uh, there were a total of 11. We passed all of them. Uh, a number of them will support supportive of the state of Oregon and, and Umatilla County and all the other counties. The, the second one had to do with woody biomass. And that was uh, for NACO to support lobby efforts to increase the use of woody biomass in the Forest Service and BLM land planning uh, to reduce uh, ladder fuels and fuel buildup uh, and enhance the productivity of our natural resource environment in, uh, in our timber and rangeland. But allowing that woody biomass to be used for uh, production of energy uh, going forward in the future. And the uh, uh, other one that, that I carried was the materials preference uh, lobby effort, uh, lobbying again Congress to uh, not <coughs> Uh, do a bill that would require the federal government to dictate to counties and communities 
what materials they have to use in repair and uh, building of water infrastructure, be it wastewater, uh, sewage, those types of things. Uh, and it was wastewater, it wasn't potable water. Uh, and this was due to the fact that a lot of communities, uh, the engineers and the staff of those uh, communities, be it county or cities, know and understand what their areas uh, need as far as that infrastructure build out and what those areas can actually withstand. Is it better to use plastic pipe? Is it better to use uh, a steel pipe, uh, what types of routes, and uh, this would enable NACO to lobby Congress to not allow the federal government to have the total jurisdiction over what those communities would need. And this actually was called a uh, local control uh, effort on the part of NACO for counties. So those were some pretty important issues that uh, we, we dealt with. We had had rumored that during the uh, the annual business meeting uh, that there would be a lobby group fighting the material preference uh, resolution that we passed, but they they did not come forward. So all of the resolutions passed. Uh, out of our committee. I so, can honestly say I wish my committee meeting had been that exciting. <laughs> uh, EELU is the most contentious, uh, most unusual committee, uh, and, and they have the most uh, issues brought before them because it deals with energy, it deals with land use, deals with environment, and you have a lot of different opinions being expressed. Uh, real quickly on the uh, back, to, back to NACO, just so you know, when you said there were no organ appointments, yes. I was reappointed. Oh, you were? They didn't have your name up there. Well, they, that's because I wasn't there. They didn't see any need. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> no, so you I were, don't know about that. But you were it, reappointed to the vice chair of uh, the, uh, Human Services and Education. Okay. Mark Molehill's presentation back there was very well received. Good. I, Very well received. Was there a decent crowd? There was. Yes. Oh, good. And uh, also the county, one of our county, one of three in Oregon, uh, Umatilla, Wasco County, and Clackamas County, we didn't go up to, they didn't present an award on the, uh, on stage. The recognition. But we were given recognition in the program. Uh, it was a pretty thick program. Uh, I will say this, the state of California, the number of counties that had recognition, there were eight pages of California, of, of California counties, eight pages that got recognition. However, Wasco County, uh, Umatilla County, and Clackamas County were the three number one counties in Oregon. So I think we're it might, proud of that. might be nice if the commissioners sent a formal letter of thank you to Mark so that his board is aware of the fact he did that, spoke on behalf, because I think I think there was, if there may have been one other Oregon presentation, but I don't think there was m much on that program from Oregon besides. And I think a letter of appreciation to uh, uh, Susan for going back and being available and present during that. Would you be willing to pin those? Yeah, if you'll sign them. Oh, sure. I, I'll do yeah, that. I'd rather you sign it. It's going to make more, sure. it'll mean more sure. to the ESE board if you sign it. Okay. I thought maybe your friendship with Mark would, he'd rather have you sign it. But well, I'll it sign would it. dilute the. <laughs> okay. And then the, uh, the last item, and this is more for information, uh, AOC is is going through, and I will not be able to uh, attend the executive board retreat next week. You will do that next Sunday and Monday. Uh, we are changing a number of staff. AOC is downsizing. Um, and I learned just this morning, and, and this was not one of the planned changes, 
but Emily Acklin uh, has resigned and she will be moving to, she's taking a job in her former hometown area, uh, Travis County, Texas, which is the Austin area. So, Gil, be, Gil is retiring. Gil? Gil, yes. So, uh, and will be replaced. Gil is retiring. They're going to switch his duties. Uh, I'm not sure if Andy is... I think a, Andy is going to be assigned that. He'll, he'll take that. I checked it to so, make sure they're keeping Andy and they are. There are four people that will be... Stacy is uh, going. Yeah, Stacy, Mark Nystrom. I, I don't want to yeah. uh, mention I, I, don't know I don't know what's going to happen to Health and Human Services, yeah. but I have formally submitted my resignation from that committee. From the, all of those okay. because of the Rotary, because ro the Rotary meets on Monday, and so I have no interest in going to Salem on Mondays. Yeah. So. so. Okay, that's all I had. Other comments? I don't think questions? we have to take action, but do know that we do have uh, an event here on the morning of the eclipse. Yes. We're going to the roof for sun tea, sun chips, and moon pies. Great. So, so there'll be a brief interlude in our day while we go up and watch. County these. staff will hit the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Robert, anything? No. All right. And again, member of the public? <laughs> All right. We are adjourned.